Ryan's Mobile One. This is a story and repair on a 2009 F-350 that steers by itself how it wants to, especially in parking lots and pulling in and out of driveways where you got to be careful not to hit other cars. Pretty freaky. Jesus, take the lead. So customer complaints death wobble and the power steering just like shuts off every so often. But it's like it won't stay in the middle. It just like fights away from it as if it's like on a hill and it wants to slide to one side or another. Not sure how else to describe it. And then you go to turn and it's like you can't even get the steering wheel to want to turn at all. See, that's not me. It's just like doing its own thing. It just doesn't want to be in the middle. But when you're, see now I can't even get it to turn. It's like it fights the crap out of you to turn. See, it doesn't course correct. If I let go of the wheel, the it goes to the right. It doesn't go back to the left. It doesn't straighten up. So I've got the wheels straightened up and they're off the ground. There's no reason this should be hard to turn at all. See, I'm up on jack stands. This tire here, I'm not going to roll. I'm going to leave it in the bound position where we couldn't turn it before. And now watch me turn to the right. You see that it's straight. So if I go any to the right, it's going to be straight ahead. Go past straight, it should just stay there. And it just springs right back. That wheel joint makes it so it doesn't want to turn. This can create all kinds of low speed death wobble. I don't know if it, at high speed, usually it just breaks or messes up whatever it takes to get it done. Here are some of the steering linkages and seals that were destroyed as part of that process. Uh, when I was driving last night on the highway, as long as I was going straight down the highway, it was fine. I could turn the wheel back and forth, it was alright, but then coming back it wouldn't. Coming back down to low speeds, it was a mess again. So this one's turning now. Now that I've rolled it, I wonder if it'll go back and forth. See, now it'll just stay there. Now it'll just stay there. It's freed up. But when it does bind, it just creates all kinds of havoc. See, it's fine now. In a big way, that's the worst part of it, is you don't know if your steering's going to work or not work, so it catches you off guard. And speaking of catching things, you can catch your thumb and bust it. So with the tire turned out and the hub locked, you can see the play in the wheel joint here. And you can't get the tire to move. So you can see the spread open, closed, open, closed. But you can't get the wheel to turn. You go to the other wheel, it's also locked, meaning that the hubs are locked. This is the back side of the other tire. That's the one that's turned out that we just looked at. When you look at this one, you can turn it, you can roll it, everything goes. You go to the other side and it's just locked up. So what happens is when that thing gets in its happy or unhappy state, it can make the wheel go side to side and it can lock you out to make it hard to even turn while you're moving. So here's all the old parts that we already did and then we found out that we needed these parts and then being we were doing this, this failed. So then we had to get these parts and these parts and use these tools to get this replaced so that we can clean up all this mess and get this back going out there. This is the wheel joint. It's a U-joint that's on the drive shaft for the front axle. Front wheel goes here, hub assembly and everything. It's supposed to be able to move up and down on this plane. It's supposed to be able to move right and left on this plane. So if you do both together, you can do diagonal or you can go all the way around in a circle between the two of them. That's where the U and universal joint comes from. You can move it universally, any direction. When it becomes bound, especially on one plane, that's when you get it wobbling and shaking your steering wheel. Dog's walking through the tripod. Jeez, dude, where's your professionalism? So anyway, you should be able to move this up and down. It should pivot here. It should pivot there. But it's so stuck that even the power steering is not able to move it. And it's actually moving the steering wheel back and forth on its own. So when it's a little bent like this, that's when you get that thing where it makes the steering wheel not want to hold center. It goes one way or the other way. So let's hit it with a hammer, shall we? Where can we hit it without hurting it? Right here. So we're going to hit it here. Nothing. We're going to hit it this way. Try to get it to pivot on this point right there. It's a big hammer. <laughs> I'm dropping a lot of sockets. You get the idea. It's pretty stuck. 
So this is what we have. There's a saying for what it is. It's uh, memory steer. This is the first wheel joint cha ca chap. <laughs> Giddy up. This is the first wheel joint cap that came off and it was a little bit discouraging because it doesn't have any rust or anything to bind. It's all perfect. This is how it should look. And then the second one that came off, you see all of this dust and crud that's in it and all kinds of uh, powder that can really bind in between each of those needle bearings. So these caps are the ones that are basically facing out. The part that's facing away from you is the part that we had the oil and the grease on before uh, here it is laid out you can see I had three that were just really bound up and then one that was kind of okay when I was pressing these out they did not want to come out at all when you go to put them on it's just so gritty it just binds and binds and binds you see all the dust that comes out of them it's just so bad but it's and then you go to put on one that has the grease on it and you can see one of them is falling out of place right there. But even still, it should be the hard one because that's out of place. And it is the hard one. <laughs> that's funny. Let me put that back up in so it doesn't bind on that. All right. It goes right on. You can spin it, turn it, and slip it back off. No big deal. That's how easy this should go. And then you go back to this one. I can't get it to turn, I can't get it to come off without popping and rocking it. It will not twist and turn. And it does not want to go on either. Huge difference. So this is the service bulletin. Basically you got to clean all kinds of stuff, especially right in here where it goes through all that mating surface. Because this is where the new seal goes. This is what it looks like. It goes in like that. So this is facing outside. This is inside, and this is just another one of those uh, Fordisms, floating seal kind of things. This inner part spins on the outer part, and it's greased on the inside, both sides. Just like the, you can see on this, how there's the part that goes onto the assembly, and it spins inside the seal. So all the sealing action occurs inside of here. Interesting, right? So same kind of a thing. Brought to you by the folks at Dana. It's not just a Fordism, it's a Danaism. So you gotta clean all that, make sure that that seals up good. And then you also have to get rid of the old seal that looks like this, it's always falling apart and just janky. Clean the whole length of the shaft, remove the disc if present, we don't have that. And then uh, basically clean all of this because all of this has to run through the middle of this part. And if it's all rusty, it's gonna be all the way in which creates resistance and can cause this to fail and fall apart. That would suck. Fords are best the second time they're built. That's why I get stuff from the dealership. Bonus footage at the end. <laughs> so my dad used to say that uh, a long time ago, we used to Where call ourselves Nabejo. And then the Spanish first came up with Nabejo.